Good day. What's up, Vinyl Community? Uh, seeking a thread. Gonna do the 2023 Experimental Vinyl Tag. Hopping on this one quick. Good to see uh, my good pal Alex uh, bring this thread back, which was um, a lot of fun last year. A lot of different people entered it. A lot of great responses. It lends itself to that. Being creative and sort of interpretive with, with picks. And uh, yeah, here this morning we got finally some natural light coming in, so we're going with that. Uh, the smoke has sort of risen or drifted away. The wind, I'm going to tell you about in a second, has maybe pulled it away, so we finally have some light coming in. The air is better. I'm, I'm upstate New York, so we were, we had some um, hazardous as the wind or as the air reports were giving us um, uh, air and smoke in our in our midst, but. Better today, Friday. So, five questions from Alex. I got five records, but the sixth one I'm going to just play here for Atmosphere, the Wind Harp. Many will know this record. It came out on United Artists, 1972, and by nature an experimental record. Uh, pretty common, but involved some sculptors, or artists, visual artists, actually. Um building this harp, a giant harp, uh, in, in Massachusetts, 1972, and the idea was that it would be played by the wind, essentially. And you can see there's the inner sleeves here where they're building it, and there's a whole description on the back, just to, some sort of poetic ideas about what this was and they had to use microphones nearby and if you think about it, you say, well microphones with the wind would pick up. And, and distort the the ribbon, you know, the mics. But what they did was put socks over the microphone, so it, you know, it effectively worked like a a filter, and they were able to just pick up the sound and uh, it worked. Look at that! Look at that harp in the middle of winter there, kind of eerie. You know, it's sort of an art art project in itself. Just the piece, just the object being created kind of like the monolith in 2001 but um, yeah beautiful so it, it creates the sound and they recorded it over four seasons I guess so we're gonna hear some of that the wind harp this probably qualifies as a pick but I just wanted to play it because uh, I've been I've, I've not had this record until recently though I used to see it in anger mom all the time so I finally got it anyway the first question is um, uh, artist who is doing minimalism. There's many picks for this, many one you can go with. Um, much of experimental music has some element of, you know, the sort of the forefathers of minimalism. Um, of course, uh, Alex laid that out. Uh, Terry Riley and Lamont Young and a lot of, um, you know, ethnic music. So, but I went with something a little different, but certainly minimal. Um, Craig Leon, sort of coming from the rock world a bit, uh, was a producer working with Suicide, the first Ramones album, but made this album for Tacoma in 1975, I think it is, or is it later than that? Oh, 81. I don't know why it would be 75 in my head, but uh, on the Tacoma label, it's effectively a work of minimal synth, I suppose. Uh, four tracks, Master at Sterling Sound, which is trademark quality, I guess it's on these Tacoma labels. And it's a sort of an eerie listen, um, like I said, kind of in the realm of minimal synth, you might say. Um, but repetitive and uh, simple in nature, sort of giving it that appeal. Uh, almost industrial, I guess you'd say as well. But I just think the artwork and overall feel lends itself to this and so it's much more of an experimental record than a minimal synth record or a post-punk record or anything like that but we'll go with Craig Leon Namas all right something invoking invoking a dream state a record invoking a dream state um, again this absolutely open to, to um, interpretation I went with a German record a bit of a kraut rock record not one that's talked about much this is Sam Vogel by Gunter Schickart. Um, this is actually a reissue from 1974. The original was a private press. This is on the Brain label. And um, I think he did this artwork too. 
but it's all constructed from guitar loops. He would um, and voice. He would overdub on one channel, and then record again on the other channel, and then dump that into another. I think, or I think overdub. It would record on one side. He was only using a two-track stereo a tape machine. Record on one, then play and record with a new one on another track on the other side and then go back to the first side and record over that so layering sort of old school way sort of doing multi-tracking uh, but I believe it was just on a two track I'm pretty sure I read that anyway his second record for Sky is fantastic too Uberfolig this one um, definitely actually also minimal it's pretty quiet and restrained at times but if you like the um, Manuel Gotching guitar records this does it predate them? it's around the same time I think this one's around the same time. Maybe it's maybe it does predate. This might be before. Actually, this is before, especially the private press. Uh, I'll double check that. But so perhaps influencing Gotching and the Inventions record. Um, so yeah, this is the. Um, it is on the Green Brain label, but like I said, the first pressing is a private press. Um, but lovely. And very much dreamy, like dreamy layering and soundscapes is what's happening on that record. Uh, Animal Sounds. I was going to go with the David Tudor Rainforest record, which I could have, but those are actually animal bird sounds that are synthesized sort of in living room or, in, living, or sort of like um, uh, sort of sound sculptures. But I did go with um, a man, J.D. Emanuel uh, Rainforest Music. Uh, this is from 1981. I need to upgrade this. This is the reissue still from 2017 on the Gire. But uh, uh, all synthesizers, but also recording, um, he tells it where on here, are tropical birds and nature sounds recorded. Houston Zoo tropical bird aviary. So bird sound. Um, and the cool thing is that he uses the Frippertronics technique on this, which is where you use two tape machines and you record and play into one tape machine and the output of that goes into a new tape machine and you sort of like use tape degradation to, to manipulate sound sort of what Fripp and Eno were doing on the uh, No Pussyfooting Records I think I described that right the inner sleeve even says it but yeah real time starting the recording on deck one playing in it back on deck two feeling the signal Feeding the signal back to deck one, carefully keeping the recording level stable, all while adding new music and letting old music fade out. That's the inner sleeve. J.D. Emanuel is the only... Uh, I forgot to look up what other records he has, but um, many of you will know this one. A beautiful uh, ambient um, atmospheric record. This is a reproduction of the label. Uh, but using animals or bird sounds... Rainforest Music, J.D. Emanuel, 1981. So, Strange Beauty. I decided to go with Ingram Marshall, The Fragility Cycles. Um, from 1979. In particular, the first side, which is the gamba, as he calls it. The gamba music. Uh, since 1972, when I had recently returned from Indonesia and began experimenting with the Balinese Suling Gamba in combination with electronics. And it creates a, uh, like a, a dreamy atmosphere. At times, a little terrifying. <laughs> At times, meditative and relaxing. Um, it, yeah, it, it just evokes, it's, it's how I think of sort of like, you know, as you're drifting off to sleep and sort of what's, maybe playing in your mind but not quite in the dream state yet I always feel like he's playing is he playing golf on the cover it always looks like it's golf but I think he is playing golf or it looks like it, it looks like he's swinging a golf club anyway uh, some good notes on the back of this fragility cycle uh, Ingram Marshall just passed away recently I also have the fog tropes which is a cool record um, yeah, he was basically working, you know, a lot of the synth synthesis or experimental artists of this time were working with old sounds and new, you know, you synthesize or electronic in instrumentation with field recordings or um, African instrumentation or percussion or, you know, it was usually what 
what was happening on a lot of these records and this is one of those as well from 1979 Ingram Marshall and the last record is a record done by a visual artist or cover done by a visual artist and I have both now this is the artist I've thought of first or the band I thought of first even though they don't necessarily qualify as experimental music I mean a lot of music is experimental in, in its ways, but in terms of experimental music specifically, we're talking about stuff that you might use a lot of found sound or things that aren't traditionally made with music instrument or instrumental uh, uh, instrumental makeup and making music from that. So you know, yes, I don't know if that made sense, but that's the way I define experimental music anyway. I think is uh, found sound, different sounds from different environments and coming up and making music out of that. Um, pushing boundaries. Anyway, experimental rock is a thing and this is what I would call this band or psychedelic from the 90s, Olivia Tremor Control. The main artist when it comes to the visual aspect is Will Cullen Hart who did this image and does all of the artwork, a painter. I've been wanting to buy some original paint, uh, painting of his for a while, but I just haven't done it and I haven't seen any available recently. In any case, this is the combinations. Is it called combinations? I think it is. Oh, no, Hideaway. Hideaway EP. Um, this is the UK pressing on, well, it's not Fly Daddy. It's something different label. I forget, you can't quite see it. Blue Raincoat, I think it is. Anyway, it's the UK pressing from 98. This is based off their second album, Black Foliage. And just stunning painting or cover art here by Will Cullen Hart. As I said, he does all of the Olivia Tremor Control covers as well as his other band, um, Circulatory System, which I have as well. All beautiful paintings. This is also interesting in this context of this tag because for this album, their second album, this is an EP based from that second album, Black Foliage. Uh, the band asked people to write in, fans to write in and tell them, relay uh, dreams. Write in and write out dreams that you had. And they were going to use those dreams to help influence the making of this album, Black Foliage, which in itself was all based and very exper experimental based on one motif or one bass line that's on the entire album. They keep reprising and sort of similar to what jazz musicians would do with, with compositions variations on a theme that's really what black foliage the album was with the idea of listeners dreams being mixed in and sort of um becoming the uh, the makeup of those songs and so uh yeah this hideaway out uh, ep is two songs from black foliage and then one other song so i wanted to show this one the original ep i have the album too which is which is uh looks very similar but it's a different painting Olivia Tremor Control. Many of you will know that band. Uh, absolutely seminal band for me. Uh, reunited maybe 10 years ago now, but they're mostly from the 90s and early aughts. So that's my visual artist contribution for this final tag. That's it. Five questions, and we've been listening to The Wind Harp, Songs from a Hill, Songs on a Hill from 1972. Um, looking forward to seeing more entries in this experimental vinyl tag, and uh, that's about all there is. I'll see you on the next one. Later.